I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. Today we're going to talk about what, what can be understood by the term annulment. And we'll begin by saying why that term, why just talking about it like that is a problem. We'll talk about sort of the cause for it, a reason for receiving it, um, or a, a declaration of noli, which is proper language. And then lastly, we'll have a um, sort of a pastoral encouragement. It's come to my attention in the last couple of years as a priest that um, even like in good and faithful Catholic circles, there seems to be quite a bit of confusion about the term uh, annulment. And the term itself is probably a significant cause of the confusion. In seminary, uh, we were encouraged to, to speak of the topic using the, the terminology declaration of nullity. Um, an annulment seems to to be used or to give the impression of Catholic divorce. It's like there's something there and it's being, it's being wiped away. Whereas a declaration of nullity, what's happening is that we're looking at uh, the marriage, we're looking at the vows, we're looking at the people and the circumstance at the moment, at the moment of the marriage to see if something was lacking. Therefore, there is a null marriage. Therefore, there is no marriage bond. Marriage is a thing. Like sacramental marriage has particularities and objective um, components which have to be there. And in a properly celebrated sacramental marriage, there is a marriage bond which is formed. And the church does not have authority to dissolve that marriage bond. There is no annulling that bond. So if that bond exists, um, this man and this woman are married unto death. And there's nothing that man can do to separate what God has united. There's nothing that the church can do to dissolve that bond. And so, in the process of, of an investigation towards nullity to receive a declaration of nullity, what the, the tribunal is doing, what the Catholic tribunal is doing, is looking to see if there were any necessary components of a valid marriage which were lacking at the moment of exchange of vows, therefore resulting in a, an absence of this marriage bond and a reception of a declaration of nullity. So what are, what are some of the necessary components, some of the reasons that one might receive a declaration of nullity? And basically we'll get it like this, like ignorance, inability, or insincerity. So ignorance is this, is for you actually to um, enter into sacramental marriage, to exchange vows, you have to know what you're doing. Hopefully we're getting a lot better at making sure people are educated by the time they get to that moment, but it can be possible that you're unaware that there's an exclusivity to marriage, that man and woman are only allowed to be intimate, sexually intimate with each other, with your husband or your wife, and you can't have somebody else on the side. Like if you're ignorant to that, you can't actually will marriage, or you don't know what's actually forever, like for till death do you part. If there is a lack of knowledge about what you're saying yes to, uh, you can actually say yes to it. And it can be grounds for a declaration of nullity. So ignorance is number one. Uh, number two is going to be inability. Like if you have to be free, you have to be free to enter into to, to marriage. And so if, if there's fear, um, if there's outside like coercion, or if, for example, there is addiction, if there's something like this, with a, which is going to be looked at and judged, if it's judged significant enough to undercut your capacity and therefore make you unable to enter into marriage, it can be grounds for a declaration of nullity. Because if you're not free, um, you're not going to be able to actually enter into a marriage. Okay, and then the last is this. is We'll call it insincerity, which is basically this. I know what the church teaches. Um, I'm free, to, I'm free to enter into this. I'm not afraid. I'm not driven by any sort of anxiety. I'm not addicted to this, that, or the other thing. Well, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that if things don't work out, I can't just get divorced and marry somebody else. I don't really believe, I'm not, I'm not planning on actually being faithful to my husband or my wife, or we're not going to actually be open to life. You can just directly will against what the church says you need to say yes to, and therefore like you're being insincere. And that can be grounds for a declaration of nullity. Okay, th at this moment, a little review. And then actually we're gonna have these, these two little pastoral applications, okay. The church does not have authority to dissolve the marriage bond. 
Um, what, what God is united, like man cannot separate. So if there's a validly celebrated um, wedding, sacramental marriage, there is a, a bond there that the church cannot annul. But through this process, what is going to be looked at to see if there's grounds for a declaration of nullity, to saying that something was lacking and therefore that marriage bond was never created. And the reason why you cannot divorce and remarry without receiving a declaration of, of nullity is because the church assumes the bond. When, when people get married, we assume that the marriage bond is there. And so you can't, you can't, marry, you can't, you can't be married to two people at the same time. After this process, if we, can, if we can see that something was lacking, there's a declaration of nullity. Now it's saying, like, you're not married to somebody, therefore you can marry another person. So that's the idea. So here's, the, here's a couple, two, two pastoral applications. Number one is, is you don't judge this yourself, and you don't propose to judge it on somebody else. Like, um, you just, you go through the process, you allow it to be observed and, and looked at, and you don't just assume anything. And you shouldn't assume anything on behalf of other, other people. It can be very problematic and misleading and uh, cause pain in the future. And second is this, is we have to be, we have to be super sensitive um, to people who are Catholic and, and divorced. And, and, a, and a couple of reasons is this, is um, principally like, uh, there's these great words of Archbishop Fulton Sheen that it takes three to get married, meaning man, woman, and God, but, but it only takes one to get divorced. And how many times I've seen one man or one woman who meant it their, their marriage day and who want to fight and do everything they can to stay married, but another person walked away and left them in a really difficult situation. So, so we want to be sensitive and very, 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 very slow to any sort of judgment on a fellow Catholic who is in, um, who's been divorced. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that's helpful. I think it's important that we, we get to know this. Um, my proposal for you going forward is, is I'd really encourage you it sounds a little bit funny. It's a few extra extra syllables, but take take the, the terminology, get an annulment uh, out of your lexicon, out of your vocabulary, and let's use declaration of nullity. Um, saying annulment the way we do often, it um, it confuses people. It confuses people a lot, and it ends up hurting people in, in the long run. So thank you for watching. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're gonna make it. God bless you. Peace.